Yo, welcome, welcome to another episode of Absalom, the Art of Astrology and Demon Slaying. We have an amazing and epic new episode with my very, very dear friend who is super talented, uh, Tierra from Queens with Lit Dreams, who is a professional numerologist, a dream interpreter of over 20 years, and also a psychic medium. And super excited. We are going to be doing a forecast for 2024. Now, I have a forecast for 2024 that I have um, posted, and you can find that if you go to my socials. But um, And that's just an astrology forecast, but we're going to do something really special today, which is talk about the forecast for 2024, me with my astrological analysis, and then Tierra with her really incredible insights, particularly in numerology, but also she's a bomb psychic, y'all. Like, <laughs> this is one of my really good friends and like one of my most talented friends as well. So I'm super excited for this conversation and feel free to introduce yourself, Tierra. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Tierra. Um, I also go by the Spiritual Valkyrie with Queens Who Lit Dreams. And yes, I am a numerologist and a psychic medium, and my specialty is in dream interpretation. Uh, so I've been doing this work for a long time. Uh, Oak and I met each other back in 2017, I believe. Yeah, 2017. And so um, I, it's just an honor to even be on this podcast and see the growth uh, from those years of just learning about ourselves and <laughs> the struggles and... Uh, <laughs> The, the spiritual awakenings, multiple spiritual awakenings in different ways. So uh, it's been a journey for sure. So this is not the first time we've done a, a, a forecast and we talk about it all the time. So for me, I'm just excited that now we're on your platform and we're doing your podcast and letting it be a lit session <laughs> because it's the forecast for 2024 is about to be um, epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've we specifically have been doing our like that's a big part of our relationship actually is working with the energy for the upcoming year and sharing our, our predictions and there's something really spectacular if you're a reader and you specialize in astrology or numerology those are great modalities but the way that i've strengthened as a practitioner has actually been with working with tiara who has immense knowledge with numerology taught me so much and also that has refined the way that I work with astrology of course but there are certain things with astrology that you wouldn't always be able to see immediately without the numerology and it's vice versa it's the same thing so I think being a good reader you have access to you do the one thing that you do very well at the very least and then you have a cross reference point with another modality and that's why I feel extremely blessed to have so many friends, particularly my work with Tierra has, has actually strengthened me as an astrologer tenfold. So, you know, we don't learn in a vacuum, y'all. Like we learn through cultivation with each other. And just like, that's a really powerful thing because I'm confident with my work because I've had the ability to uh, check and balance with other people. So just wanted to share that. Um, because it is very important yes it really is and you we we met when I started uh, my certification in numerology so it was a journey of like learning you know how the numbers interact with us how the numbers affect us and impact us every day and to be able to you know, go tit for tat with the astrology and the numerology. It's been um, amazing because everything you, everything I know about astrology, I've learned from you. So, um, so I will always tell anybody who's listening, I will always say, expand your horizons around the modalities that you practice because uh, you, you can, you can be great at one thing, but uh, there's so much knowledge, so much information that can come from understanding the perspectives of other modalities and the practices of those modalities and how that can kind of open a different part of your brain in a way that you never thought you could 
be open before. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I, yeah. Even learning astrology for me has been um, it's been really eye opening. More so because I learn it from you, but then also it's not like on like the very mainstream level where everybody's talking about the same thing, and it's like no, you actually build relationship with the information and I think that's something that numerology and astrology can do for one another uh and so those Mm -hmm. who are astrologers or those who are numerologists you can build the relationship that you have with the modality and the information that comes with it so that in itself make you makes you a better master at it and a better student and like and learn things on a different level that you haven't learned it before and I'm still learning to this day, like still learning. So it's exciting. It's exciting stuff. I would highly recommend it for everybody to at least dabble into it if that's something that you want to open your eyes up to or open the doors into. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> word, 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 word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just so much praise for and the and the appreciation for like having community. I think that this is like a really important thing for spiritual practitioners is like oftentimes feeling pretty alone in your process. And that can create a lot of issues like the over identification with the ego, over identification with your modality. um, And just like, yeah, the, like not being able to have just the, the openness of perspective. Like, I think that's pretty dangerous. Like anytime you're, very isolated it can get pretty pretty creepy i think yeah um but yeah so i guess i would love to just like hop in and then talk about 2024 and um you know what i really have the intention for with this conversation is like yes i'm going to talk about astrology and you're going to talk about numerology but i really want to make this conversation super simple because i i don't want to talk about all the planets because if you know people are listening it's like they might not know any astrology or any numerology at all but i think just being able to lightly talk about like key themes and then you know we can go into some of the specific specificities or technicalities and stuff but like i'm I'm having the intention that like i want to make this conversation just feel very natural and easy um if that makes sense yes perfect 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 Mm -hmm. so is there anything you want to say before we get into this conversation? Anything yeah. Like yeah, I guess, um, you know, to make it simple for everybody to at least understand where the conversation is going to be going. Uh, for those of you who never may have never heard of numerology, um, mm. similar to astrology, where it works with the planetary energies and the stars and constellations and all that stuff. Um, numerology focuses on the essence of numbers and the study of numbers and how the numbers impact your life. That means the numbers such as your birthday is similar to knowing what your natal chart looks like and knowing what your birth chart looks like, numerology birth chart, your information such as your birthday, which contain numbers, your name, which contain numbers, all provide information, a blueprint of your life and how the energy affects you whether it's on a global scale, uh, individual scale, uh, a universal scale, et cetera. So um, if you haven't heard of numerology, if you don't know what that is, this is really how the numbers are making a huge impact in your life and how you can go day to day um, understanding or understanding that information and how you can utilize it to help you when it comes to forecasting, when it comes to planning, when it comes to healing and uh, and really getting a better understanding of yourself. So that's like how I always kind of like to set the set the standard of those who have never heard of it before. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like what I guess we'll start with for sure. Word. Thank you so much. Yeah. When you're talking about like the individual, the social and also like the collective and how the numerology is going to define the impact of numbers, which is really just like another way of saying like how energy moves, I think, mm-hmm. or energetics. And that's also astrology. Astrology is planetary movement, which is also numerical as well. And so it, it is the description of how life is impacted or life is a reflection of movement of the planetary bodies. 
And so, yeah, it all comes back to the reading of energetics. It's, you know, it's, it's languaging numbers and planetary motion. It's languaging that describes energy and same with numerology. Astrology also describes individual collective and also like the interpersonal dynamics that also, you know, cause all of that is life. Like life is the inner outer experience. So yeah, there, there is a, a really specific intersection of numerology and astrology. I mean, I would just say that astrology is actually just numerology, you know, but the way in which they're kind of calculated, it, it, it may have intersection, but it, it oftentimes can be separate modalities as well. Um, so yeah, I hope you all are excited for this forecast because you don't even understand that this is going to be a different kind of forecast that you're going to come across. <laughs> <laughs> um like there is just ways that in previous years like i'll give you an example you know in 2022 in 2022 i just had a really strong sense that aliens were going to be like a topic and you know i'm not the most of a conspiracy babe but like i'm open minded and i'm like really i'm really aware of like different kind of like dimensions of understanding. So I, I try to be as practical as possible. But anyway, I just knew that like aliens were gonna be like a vibe. And mm -hmm. you know, lo and behold, they were. And I was asking Tierra in our 2022 forecast, I was like, yo, like, when do you think the aliens are gonna like show up? When is like, when is it gonna be like UFO mainstream kind of like in the news type shit? And I believe you were like, you were saying September, or like October of 2022. And for some reason, I did not get that when I was doing my forecasting, but it happened. There was just like this really specific, like uh, mainstream information about aliens. And then, you know, that like literally continued into 2023 for sure, you know, if you're, oh, yeah. and that's just interesting, but that's the kind of thing where it's like, both of us will oftentimes feel something, see something, but it's like we support each other in like being able to verify. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, no, yeah, that, that makes sense that it would happen in this month. So this is what we're going to try to do with this forecast. And we're going to try to keep it cute, keep the energy like easy and flowing. <laughs> um, but okay, I'm going to ask you the big question, Tara. So like, what do you think are like the top like three to four to five themes of 2024? All right. Let's go. <laughs> Get started. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> yeah. So, 2024, I would say that the top themes, I'm not even going to give a number of how many, I'm just going to say the top themes in my, my um, forecasting would be, for 2024, I would say karma slash Karma slash choices Ooh. is a huge, huge theme. Say more. Um, <laughs> Say more. Like the the so let's let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. 2024. If we're looking at the numbers of 2024, you have the number two, the number two, the number four. We cannot ignore the number zero as well, too. Okay. Um, so 2024, those numbers. Um, each number has its own influence. And we like every, if those who don't understand, every number has its own energetic uh, frequency with that number. So you have to look at each number when you're looking at a combination of numbers, such as a year. So you have two, zero, two, four. That equals, if you add all of them together, is the universal eight year. So we're moving into the universal eight year. Right now we're in a seven year, but moving into the universal eight year for 2024. Eight is all about manifestations, abundance. It's about power and career and uh, power dynamics. It's about um, what goes around comes around. So infinite opportunities, infinite lessons, um, and it's about karma. <laughs> and that's why I say karma slash choices, because um, when you're moving into a karmic number, because eight is the number of karma, 
Uh, so what goes around comes around. That's literally the infinity sign. And what you put in is what you get out. So if I'm talking about the themes that are going to come up for 2024, top of my list is the karma and choices here because a lot of the choices we made in the past few years specifically in 2020 you're going to start seeing those start coming up in 2024 because of the dynamics of what the eight energy holds and what the four energy holds back in 2020 so yo <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna just pause you real quick because yeah. i was like the biggest part of like my forecast is that the themes of 2020 are very strong in 2024. So I'm going to just say that. So like congruence immediately, like this is, this is straight up happening, I guess, just based on that, like, um, I guess I'll just share, you know, the, um, there's a lot that occurred in 2020 astrologically and like, it's just echoing Mm-hmm. into 2024 and and i guess you're using the word karma the word that i was thinking of is like we're going to start to see a lot of the issues that have developed based on choices that were made back in 2020 december of 2020 pretty much but anyway i'm, I'm gonna let you go sorry oh. I, didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> no like i love this like, like more. <laughs> yeah word. it's 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 heavy it's it's heavy and as far as like again the choice like what you said the choices that were made during that time that's why I say karma and choices because that is um this this 2024 is going to reflect a lot of like the work we did or did not do and like that (laughs) and we and here's the thing this is why I, I tell people every energy is going to have its own different signature but you never should sleep on it. You never should sleep on it. Like 2020 was like a time where we actually could have really made a lot of changes for the better, you know? Um, And then what you would see is that a lot of people made profit off of chaos. And um, (laughs) um, so we're going to be seeing a little bit more of the effects of that in 2024. Now, that's not like a fear mongering or anything of that sort. It's just the reality behind it all. Um, so I would say karma and cho- karma choices are a major theme in 2024. Uh, <laughs> the second theme I would say uh, <laughs> that's deep, yo. Like, I know. I will let people that. process that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's the next one? <laughs> So um, the second the second theme that I, that it's prevalent in 2024, I would say, is money. Um, because the number eight is about money, it's a money number. It's about also risk. So um, so a lot of people can think like, oh, when I hear when I see the number eight, or when I feel the frequency of the number eight, I'm like, oh, this is about money. This is CEO energy. This is like, you know, big boss energy, but it also is like a risk energy. So, you know, when it comes to money, there's a lot of risks that are being taken um, that can be taken in this year that can result in loss or in profit and gain. So just like we have to be mindful of that and also our attitudes around money, our relationship around money, like all of that is going to start shifting this, uh, this year. And again, you're, you're going to notice if you've done a lot of the healing work per se during 2023 around your money, around your mindset, around your beliefs and and, and your traumas, because it's going to be a directly reflected universally and individually for people in 2024. (laughs) Hold on, like why? Yeah, well, because the work that we put in is what we get out. Oh, word, word, word. So if you have the infinity sign, what you put in is what you get out. A lot of the healing, the belief systems that we have around money, the things that we need to work on with money and also around like housing markets, 
stock markets, like these large corporations and like these structural positions that we have like a lot of money invested in. You're starting to see a lot of it now where a lot of people are making these videos around, oh, well, America owes X amount of much X amount of money and we don't know where it's at. We put all this money into military and we have no idea where it comes from, you know, but then let's go ahead and charge this single woman, you know, with kids X amount of money because she didn't file her taxes for one year. You know, so like you're seeing the 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 shifting in dynamics and what people are paying attention to now, and it's coming to more so large corporations, larger structural things when it comes to actual money. So if we didn't do any of the work to start healing our beliefs, healing our our um our traumas in our relationships with money per se, eight has this way of bringing that to the forefront on a larger scale. And so on an individual level, you may see like your relationship to money shift, but on a larger scale, our structural relationship to money and like what our countries are doing, what the world is doing with money is going to have a, a significant change for sure. <laughs> I just get a lot of like the balancing of the scales, checks and balances. Where is everybody going to be going? Uh, where is everybody's money going? You know, scandals, like there's... <laughs> There's a lot of things that will start to come out when it comes to money. So it's just the beginning for sure. I will add that confirmation. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> um, I'd say that the biggest theme in 2024, in my opinion, from an astrological perspective is the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus. And it's cool because I think that your language around it and saying that it's like money and like systems of money, that makes sense. And I, I like what you're talking about with like how your individual attitude towards money is its own, like kind of it's its own mechanism. And it's also going to be reflected out in how that is uh, showing up from a corporate perspective or from a larger structural perspective and that interplay between witnessing what gets paid attention to and how that shifts your attitude towards money, right? Because it's so funny because eight is a number that's specifically related to big money or money in general and abundance. Same with Jupiter. Jupiter is a planet that naturally represents expanse and abundance. But it's, it's almost so, it, it would be way too basic and way limited for either of us to say that this year is about money in a very simplistic way. Like, oh yeah, get that money. It's like, no, we're actually in a changing world and money and resources are actually the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which in the, the reason why I'm saying that the Uranus or the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, it also creates a different narrative on, on how abundance is something that is also shifting. And it's shifting because Uranus is a planet that represents disruption. And, and I think that ultimately, I think, yes, the attitude towards money is guaranteed. It is guaranteed. But I also think that it comes with a shift of consciousness that the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction is going to bring in dramatic changes in how we think. But I think that because in our world where we're so focused on paying our rent and the survival being solely focused on money, that it is only through these dramatic changes of how we're surviving, probably through food chain disruption, through uh, some type of breakdown in the stock market or some type of um, really dramatic shift in the economy, would we even have the, the capacity to change our minds, to have that shift of consciousness? So on a spiritual level, I can think of how there is this like really amazing capacity for all of us to have a paradigm shift where our attitudes towards how we relate to, um, to money, to capitalism, to extraction, to natural disaster, impending natural disaster, all of those things can change. But I really do think that on a very practical level, we're going to see how natural disaster, food chain disruption, um, it, they are going to have us have to drastically change our minds. Not that the changes are going to happen because we just have a spike of income coming in. It's like, no, 
the way in which we relate to the idea of abundance has to change. Yep. It's not this very basic way of saying, oh yeah, get the bag, get the money. That I think that that paradigm actually doesn't exist anymore. Oh no, it's obsolete. Obs- obsolete. And that's it. I, I think that this is like the coolest thing about like the way that we both are reading is like, yes, this this year could actually be about abundance. But there's something that that requires for us to be very socially relevant with what is actually happening in order to find abundance. And it's actually probably more so like redefining abundance. And like, I think people really need to just think about relationship to money, which is, you know, I think you, you, you said it beautifully when you were just saying, it's like, yeah, just perspective and attitude and like the, the, the personal relationship to like, you know, corporate overarching structure, how it's just, it just makes sense. Yo, that's it. (laughs) No, like, and that's, and that's the thing I say, like we both, we definitely 100% agree on this. It's, it's abundance is shifting. And we have to all understand that money is energy. It's an exchange of energy. Mm-hmm. You know, So when we talk about money, when we talk about abundance, like, of course, we can't be at the space of just being very basic, like saying, oh, eight is a big money maker. You know, like, no, there's so much more to this that... Mm-hmm you started seeing hints of it this year that we want that it's going to kind of come into full effect in the next year which is 2024 so i say 100% abundance is going to be redefined like what abundance is for us is going to be redefined if you all pay attention to how you view abundance like earlier this year or earlier year of 2023 or 2020 you know, and look at how you feel about it now, there should be a change. If you don't feel a change, then let's start asking some questions. <laughs> like, let's start asking the questions of what you want it to feel like now that our our timelines are starting to shift. Let's just say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Timelines are starting to shift. Um, Yeah, it's about to be a big change, huge change, huge Yo. change. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so yeah, I would say we have that. So we talked about karma and choices. We talked about money in abundance per se. Um, I say the next theme that I would say uh, is pretty big in 2024 would be relationships and your identification of like your self image. Um, this theme. It's about to show up so is here's the thing with numerology. Every year, the previous year gives you hints of what's coming in the next year. So like so understanding the energy of this year is giving it's a segue into the next year, you know. So a lot of people in their relationships identifying what relationships are for them. Um a lot of people may feel this wave of being very independent and very like um, <laughs> standing on business is what the kids say nowadays. But uh, what is that? They said the what? kids be like, "You gotta stand on business." I'm I'm standing on business. That's what. And <laughs> ironically, I've been hearing it a lot more. But I'm like, that's that's a energy because I oh, have that earlier this year. I'm hearing it now. So, uh, <laughs> what does that mean though? I don't know. Like, just like minding your business not minding it's like i guess say what you mean mean what you say stick to your business like stand on your business oh i and love that yeah I'm so that. <laughs> a lot of the kids are saying it nowadays i'm like okay cool we stand on business then you know Yo. <laughs> <laughs> i'll take it <laughs> but um but our our <laughs> relationship to self Again, like this can this can kind of tie into the money and the, and the abundance or whatnot, but our relationship to ourselves are going to shift. So what we identify with, um, this is, let me just say this, this is also what part of the 2020 energy is starting to show up to, um, because if you paid attention to the the um the amount of like secrets that were revealed and of like what happened in 2020 
uh, you'll start seeing that the reminiscences of that is going to be happening in 2024 and it's going to shift how we even look at ourselves because what we thought was our reality is shifting because everything is shifting you know everything is shifting and so so your relationships are going to change your um your identity is going to change what like a lot of people were feeling very divided back in 2020 because of all the pan like the pandemic and a lot of things that were happening during that time um you're going to you're going to have to make decisions about who you stand on business with you get what i'm saying so <laughs> so so and also who you stand on business with your relationships all that stuff is going to either block your abundance or allow it to come in even more like you're going it's, it's just going to become more evident of like oh this is not for me this person's not for me this person is for me and um and you're going to look at yourself completely different your relationship with self is going to be completely different I cannot tell you what that's going to look like, but there's going to be a whole wave and you're going to see a lot of people going through it. They're going to be like very open and very vocal about it as well, too. It's just that's kind of the energy behind it. But relationship to self and your own self-identity is going to shift during the age. Yo, honestly, I mean, I could read that in a way when I look at the astrology but the way you just said that and broke it down so clearly <laughs> no but i i i agree i agree 100 percent. like there's a lot of indicators that vocalization is going to be really obvious and really strong um and i think that there's a lot about just activism increasing in that essentially what you're describing is just like people's stance on their activism is actually just going to be very, very apparent. Mm -hmm. Even like more than ever. And I think that there's also like an urgency to choose, you know, and we're seeing that in a way, but I think that the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, because what you're talking about is partly the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. If I was going to frame it astrologically, also the North node eclipses and Aries and like that, in combination really creates this environment of needing to define self. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also say that like what you're talking about, like the idea of your identity and like this, the concept, is it, is it just a concept? Is it a performance or is it something that's real? I think we're really going to see that with the Mars retrograde mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Cause I think, you you were what when do you think that that's going to be like the most obvious like the this idea of like your the, the framing of your identity i thought that was really like clever wording yeah yeah um so i do get end of the year so the thing is mm -hmm. is at the end of the year it's very much between november and december time no. um, yeah very True. much <laughs> very much between november and december time because no. like, when looking at that because we okay so we go in we start off with the nine month in january but we actually mm. go into a nine month a one month and a two month again at the end of the year so by the time uh. um by the time december comes around it is actually it's I would be very surprised if people were not in that space of being very um, kind of taken aback or like reflective at the fact that, oh, crap, I am not who I said I was. I'm actually a different person or I, you know, or the, the stances that they were standing on, the business that they were standing on completely shifts. And it's OK. You know what I mean? Like, it's OK. It's just I do feel like the dynamic of like self-identity shifting definitely between like mid-november to the end of december that time frame is like really big on that energy that's really fucking big. dramatic yo mm -hmm. there's a mars retrograde in leo that happens and that one looks pretty gnarly at that time december and it's already building into shadow like the two months before so congruence Again, like this is definitely a whole vibe. But you know what this really reminds me of? 
when you're because it's it's like strange like you're like you're not even gonna know who you are when it comes to your business like you might have a completely different change of business that really reminds me of how a big part of this upcoming year 2024 is like just the you were talking about karma Mm -hmm. as a big theme and i'm looking at it as like not just karma but like regulation oh yeah and like 2020 like what i'm referring to is like the jupiter saturn conjunction of 2020 december 2020 at that time is like when a lot of people were like transitioning onto zoom and then also the vaccines came out within that month and i really and you know the vaccines when you actually like look at some of the interviews with bill gates a few years prior he was literally talking about how vaccines are an amazing economic investment <laughs> so i'm gonna just i'm gonna just leave that there you know like take that as you will but because of the Saturn contact that Jupiter is going to have this year in 2020, particularly in, like, I believe, like June, it's like we're going to see those periods connected for sure, like 100%. So the numerology is saying it, in one way, the astrology says it in another way. But regulation is, is, is something that's going to come up. So regulation on the way that we connect with each other through our social media platforms because everyone went online at that time and i think that like just overall when i look at the astrology of 2024 one of the themes that comes up for me is the uh the potential for like um cyber attack the potential for our own personal information being utilized against us you know there's already things like that those creepy zoom liability those waivers that we already signed up for just by having it that says ai can yank your fucking information right and like i think that those things are going to become a lot more present clear i think that you know mars retrograde in leo speaks to the way that people's platforms can also be taken from them as well and i think that that's the idea of like people are going to have identity crisis because their identities are actually at stake. The way that you are presenting through your Instagram, if that gets shut off because of not following these like supposed regulations, I think that there's just more regulation on the internet that is going to be happening in the way that we actually are able to provide for ourselves. Most of us have online presences presences because that is our business, yep. right? But I, I think that, you know, in combination, just like, it's hard for me to talk about every single thing that leads to my prediction, but it's more so like a coagulation of a feeling and just like being able to really articulate and pinpoint different things coming together. But yeah, Pluto and Aquarius speaks to this and Pluto in Aquarius is officially going to like kind of officially remain in um, Aquarius for probably most of this year and then officially, like, officially, officially kind of like towards the end of the year. But we're seeing that transition point, mm-hmm. which Pluto and Aquarius is a lot of those things. It's like the way in which technology and we're seeing the, the shadow material of technology itself. So, yo. It's <laughs> just yeah. scary. It just is. Scary. It is. Yeah. And- you know, when I did my forecast for 2023, I mentioned, um, you know, the shift in technology, especially for those who are in the spiritual community and how, you know, we were going to have to integrate our lives differently with our technology than we have had to in the past. And, um, and that there were going to be some technology changes happening. Like, and and that's exactly what happened this year. Like a lot of, you know, improvements in technology, a lot of recalls, if we want to pay attention to it, there's been recalls a lot, technology recalls for things. I know Tesla just recalled like 2 million cars, you know, <laughs> but I feel like there's been a lot of technology things happening. And like, even in the beginning of the year, there was, a lot of fake accounts for those spiritual uh spiritual content creators and then like all these different things that were happening again these are segues to what is going to show up in 2024 um and a lot of that is and, and speaking on the whole technology thing when it comes to like ai 
and how we're fostering AI. There's already been the scams with AI, you know, people like using your voice and people, you know, uh, trying to get money from my grandma, you know, so like there's already, there's already been that type of those type of issues. But we have to realize that AI is a baby that needs to be nourished and fed and taught. And, you know, we have to we have to nurture it in a way that is going to be supportive of what advancements we're trying to do not supportive of you know the the same baby going down the wrong path <laughs> so um this is why i say this this year is about choices and about what we do with these it's like a lot of different opportunities to foster like positive impact and abundance and and change but this also i'm gonna be 100 percent honest and maybe i'm taking it too far but <laughs> but there's as much as it is a lot of opportunities to like bring a lot of positivity into the world or whatnot if we do not utilize these opportunities we will be damn near in war by the end of the year <laughs> where so, are you getting this information <laughs> Listen, we're getting this information. This information is not only channeled, but it's very much like evidence based. <laughs> now, is this numerology is, or what? Th this is this is channeling and and numerology because we have to Example. look at the numbers. We have to look at it. Like, I mean, let's for real be like, if we got if we're going into a year of karma, if we're going into a That's year true. of karma, we have mm -hmm. to like, we have to take what we learn and utilize this energy in a way that is going to be very beneficial for the world as a collective. Um, Yo, like it's just left us. It's like we are bound to repeat history if we don't make those changes. That's what I'm saying more so about like karma. Um Yo, now when I say I agree. war, I'm not saying like we about to be bombs over Baghdad type thing. Like it's not it may not be that. It could be something else. It could be our own internal war. It could be our own like you know, we're struggling with our structures and like the people are not happy with how things have been going. So a lot of changes, it, like it, it can be a lot of different things. When I say that, it's not to be like, all right, we're about to go get drafted. You know, don't take but, it back. Don't take back what you said. Listen, I'm just saying it more and more. <laughs> take it wrong. how you need it. Take it you're how you need wrong, it. <laughs> take it like, how you there, need it. There's already a war signature coming up for 2025. Like, easily and i think that the 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 like the feathering and like the the foreplay with war is very much an energy in 2024 so don't take it back just i oh, know it's war yourself. but it's like literally <laughs> okay okay how we it. really want to take it that's what i'm saying take it how you want to take it everybody take it how you want to take it but if we don't do what we need to do we could be going to Word. I'm just saying. word, word, word. I'm just saying. Yo, well, this is a good point, and I'm gonna say this too. Like, the it is up to us. Like everything about the astrology is that it is up to us this year, and also just like maybe for the next twenty. And I would say that that's just Pluto and Aquarius from 2023 to 2042, something like that. These next twenty years is like the emphasis on our collective you know like our collective input our collective effort together as a collective like that's really just the energetic that we are working with that's the reality that that's the environment that is being created and on another level the jupiter uranus the, Ju the, the jupiter uranus conjunction that happens in april of 2024 it does represent a consciousness shift and it's like when you actually look at the astrology of 2024 you'll notice that like jupiter is the primary theme and like what i mean by that is like jupiter changes signs jupiter is contacting all these outer planets and that just means that there's a lot of events that are of a jupiter nature and so that can have a lot to do with like education with travel with um just like the flow of economy, you know, like all of that is definitely up for 
shift conversation, but also collective belief. Yeah. And the beliefs, Jupiter conjunct Uranus disruption, there is an opportunity for us to have a drastic change of mindset for how we've been doing things for these past few years. And it's very evident that it's been the what's been asked of us on a collective level is to change, change the way that we're extractive, change the way that we relate to the systems that are actually not really working, right? And so like just for Jupiter to be so highly active, and I would say that's the primary theme in 2024 is like just continual Jupiter action. Our perspective around not only abundance, but like literally the truth of how we believe that we should be living our lives is something that is being transformed. Mm -hmm. And if we're doing that with the intention of, you know, supporting life in the ways that the earth is needing honoring and life is needing to be honored in a much more important and impactful way, then that is actually the change that you're describing. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is, it can be very hopeful, but I also like don't have a lot of faith in, <laughs> in humans. Uh, Cause oh. a lot, I just, I mean, you know, but that's the thing, like what the fact that Jupiter is contacted so much shows the dramatic shift in awareness. And I really believe it's through disaster, actually. I believe that it is through natural disaster. I believe it is through kind of like literally being force fed, like the fucking media is a joke and the government systems are like extremely corrupt. And we have to kind of completely break out of how we're doing things and kind of shift which leads me to the topic that I think is the most generative rather than us kind of feeling the doom of this conversation. Jupiter and Gemini is a very peculiar placement for Jupiter because Jupiter is in its sign of detriment, meaning that there's something about the flow of systems of communication. And right, like when we're thinking about like social media, the way that we present ourselves in the way that we're communicating with each other on a large scale that's very much i can i can see that as like jupiter and gemini but when a planet is not in its dignity it actually starts to to move the energy in a way that is or the focus becomes a lot more going towards um more of like underdog energy or like underprivileged perspectives so we we're we're actually looking at who is not being represented in social media spaces, which is literally the way that Instagram and TikTok and Twitter, like they're literally always blocking people that are pro-Palestine, literally just for no ass reason, blocking a fucking brown or black person. <laughs> it's just like for literally no reason, right? Just for and, existing. And I think that what's really going to happen is this movement when Jupiter moves into Gemini in May, end of May, 2024, I think that there's just going to be this pulse, this energy of people coming together and creating enter, creating different systems that just literally divest in these fucking social media like organizations and social media spaces that don't even serve us. Mm -hmm. And we're so miserable, right? And this is the this is like the the brighter side of what Jupiter and Gemini can bring, I think. And I really feel that this is like the moment where we start to kind of take our power back. Um, and it's it's necessary. Like this is necessary work for us because there is going to be a lot of attack. Like I just I think that it's out of necessity, but I also think that just like the way that the energetics work for the year and just there's something about technology that is. There's, there's this mass development with Jupiter conjunct Gemini. I'm sorry, with Jupiter and Uranus conjunct. There's something where there's a mass development of technology, like a jump in like a whole nother octave. You know, you're feeling that too. Definitely that. And then also like, there's just this other pulse of like people, like the, the, the people, the people that we actually want to fuck with. Yeah. like us coming together to create better systems of communication less 
bless. I hope that this happens immediately. <laughs> but yeah. more so when Jupiter is in Gemini, I really think so. And and then that lends into Uranus and Gemini in 2025. So like mm -hmm. definitely I could feel that. Um, you're nodding your head. Yeah, you're saying this is April? Mm, Jupiter conjunct Uranus is going to be April of 2024. And then Jupiter in Gemini is the end of May. I would say that Jupiter and Uranus are traveling together so closely, like March, April, May, that this energetic that you're describing of like people come starting to come together or like where there is a lot more of like we're starting to kind of, it, it's like a lot of the work of what happens at the end of the year with people like questioning their identity, mm -hmm. right? Questioning their identity, questioning their presence, questioning the way they present themselves. I really see that as well. But I see a lot of that bubbling up in March, in April, and May. Like it's a very generative time. It's a very chaotic time. But mm -hmm. I also see that this is like the time that the shift of consciousness occurs. Yeah, I can agree with that. Wow. Tell me why. <laughs> Tell me um, why. Tell so, me more. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm like this is that I'm looking. I'm like so this is April. Yes, I can see that for sure because word. If we're looking at, from the numerology perspective, we're in, April is a three month, uh, wait. Oh, shit. Yes, April is a three month. So so three being the number of communication of uh, our social interactions, our creative mm. expression, you know, uh, three being that creative energy, it is going to start bringing up how we as a whole, as a collective, operate in our communication systems you get what i'm saying so like it is going to bring up that but then what really was getting me was um that time frame like the the, the three month of the april 2024 it's going to be like an energetic mirror so what what a lot of people will start seeing around that time is like a reflection of what we've already been experiencing um, and like how we want to start making those changes. So with the bubbling up of like all of these different energies and all these different aha moments that are going to be coming towards the end of the year, um, we're, we are going to start seeing it during the three months because it's, it's like, to me, when you think of that, it's kind of like a, a lot of things are going to be starting to sprout to the surface and it's going to be like holding an energetic mirror so these structures will be having the energetic mirror being held up in front of them by the collective in general so what doesn't agree what does agree like all of these different ways of how tiktok instagram social media like how we how we you know integrate our lives with social media and technology all of these are going to be like a mirror that's being held up and it's a different way of standing on business. <laughs> uh, now, what, <laughs> what I will say, what I will say is that three is also a very scattered energy. So it's not really like organized quite yet. Um, like what we will see is may can become very much more organized <laughs> i agree i I know april is about to be fucking chaotic yo and yeah. if anything it feels a lot like rebellion mm -hmm. energetic mirror that's what i'm saying the things that we uh, don't like the things that we're not happy that we're not happy with the things that people in general are just not happy with i agree 100 percent with like the under underdog energy and like the underprivileged um voices and stuff like all of that stuff is going to start coming up it's the literally holding a mirror like listen mm. you can't treat us this way it's like i just feel like a collective energy of people speaking out against against bs and yo okay so hold on like i know march is about to be a hot fucking mess <laughs> for real like i want to know what you think about that it's giving issues with the oceans oh yeah it's too energy. yeah it oh really two yeah. is oceans well two is water and like <laughs> well, emotions and that's so intense <laughs> i know um two is in two is intuitive it's it's our you know our feelings and Yo, like, it was the, the month moon. of march sorry sorry yeah 
<laughs> the month of March is giving like major existential dread vibes. Oh. It's I was like, I was like, damn, this month just seems really intense. Um, but I'd love to get your insight on that. Um, yeah, like for me, whew. um, You want insight on the two month? Come on, T. You want insight on the two month? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I would say in March, it is, it is uh, like the only thing I can really say for real, for real is we need to start meditating soon. Oh. <laughs> like, what? Like, it so just like, feels. Start now in December? Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> It's two energy again, like two energy is always um it's always one of those energies where you really do be in your feels. And a lot mm -hmm. of our our relationships are impacted during this time. And a lot of the physical changes that have been going on externally, our spiritual bodies have to catch up to it. So that catch up process is actually really difficult for some people. Um, and so as a whole on a global scale, this is like, this is just what I feel for that month. Cause we have to look at the relationship between the two month and the eight year. Let's like, I we see. Just, like, yeah, we can't ignore the fact that we're in a universal eight year just because we're looking at the two month, which is mm -hmm. March. So if we're looking at that relationship, eight and two, it's like eight is very loud and proud. Two is very, I like to be behind the scenes. I like to, you know, help the people make big moves. And like, I like to be in my feelings. I like to work in partnership where eight is a very independent number. Eight is a very much boss number. So you have to look at those two energies and look at the relationship between the two to actually fill out what that's going to look like. When you have contradicting energies of like being very much partnership, and collaboration and you know just like really partner oriented with big boss independent type energy mm -hmm. you're you're getting a clash and so with it being very spiritual the thing with eight and the two is that they're both spiritual numbers too so like i feel like a lot of people energetically are going to feel some of the uh i'm getting a lot of like past life like or um, a lot of the karmic energy starting to show up during March, uh, our spiritual mm -hmm. bodies, those who are very in tune with the energy are going to feel this very heavily. Um, mm -hmm. Damn. The, the things that are going to be coming in April, we're already going to be feeling it in March. It just won't come to the surface too much until April. Okay. Yeah. That's so fun. I was literally going to say, oh my God, you're we're so cute. I love that. So, <laughs> so I was going to say like, yeah, that energy gets really dense at the end of March, mm -hmm. but then a lot of it is going to show up in April in this way. But it's like, it's, it's the, yeah, the, the density and the existential dread is like between March and April. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So much, yo. It, it's so a much. lot. It, I feel like we, we as a collective will have to be processing a lot during that time. Mm. Um, and if I can give you what it looks like for me with that three energy, when I say the energetic mirror, um, just think of how light reflects and how quickly it does, or how if you, uh, <laughs> um, if you hold up like everyone's holding up a mirror and like things are reflecting back off of the mirror as quickly as it is, it can be very chaotic, and sometimes because it's so distracting and it's so um, and everyone's trying to like, it's distracting and loud. That's what it is. Like everything is quick. So like very quick, witty, reflective energy. And I say this because that's what I'm getting is like very much a mirror. We're very much reflecting everything that <laughs> we're not happy with and that we are happy with at the same time. But just that energy that we were feeling, that we're going to be feeling in March, that's coming up, it just feels like the quickness of how everyone holds up a mirror and like light is reflecting on everything. And you're trying to find the pinpoint of where it started. And there's you're no talking about the way that we just like are all up on our phones. 
and yeah, they're flashing like all the time. Phones, like, well, like, I mean, yeah, like <laughs> our, our phones are um, like through, through technology, through our relationships, through like a lot of different things. Everything's going to be very reflective of what's happening and very mm-hmm. much like we're seeing things in a way that we didn't see it before but it's not organized. If someone's trying to make change, if someone's trying to make, um, you know, come together as a collective, you need organization. And that's something that April doesn't really have too much of because a lot of us are trying to creatively come out with something that shows how Mm -hmm. we're feeling, that shows where we're like standing on. And that's where that whole oh, what I thought what I what I thought I was, the self-identity, the whole nine there. At the end of the year, <laughs> I would love to talk to people and like ask them. Oh <laughs> my god, yo, that's really funny. Are. That's a okay. I I think that that correlation of yes, you're changing. Yes, you're growing. Yes, you're inspired in that first portion of the year, like quarter two, like March, mm-hmm. April, is like be very mindful of how that while it's while it's deeply inspiring and while you're going to feel moved to create something that you might have to really like re- like to assess and and make sure that it's something that is really fortified within you because mm-hmm. it will be tested at the end of the year yes 100%. i really like that i like that a lot yeah i mean i think i think really in general like on a on the most practical level you know, a lot of us are in the middle of big changes, whether it's relationally, like, because I would say like 2023, like the overall energy was like relationships. Relationships were just hands down, like the biggest theme of 2023. And um, that kind of surprised me in a way, like I just, I didn't see that specifically, specifically when I did my forecast for the year, which was interesting, but I can agree. It kind of it kind of made me sad when you were like, yeah, relationships are like the biggest theme also in, you know, one of the key words that you're thinking of in 2024. I was like, damn, like more. But it, it does make sense. I get it 100 percent. And it's like because yeah. our relationships are like the biggest mirror that we have to our lives. So it life is always about relationships. But it's it's just interesting um, because like I was saying, you know, that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in March and April, it's like whether you're having a shift of relationship style or you're wanting to change careers, there's so many of us that are like ready for a big change. And that big change is kind of guaranteed in March and April Mm -hmm. might not be the smoothest and it might not be the easiest, but I think it's, it's interesting how you're saying that like that shift and that change of perspective will also be tested when we get to the end of the year, which gives me a lot. It's a different context than what I had previously thought of it's like you know are you able to change yourself and are the changes that you're making also honoring a changing world Mm -hmm. because if you're changing and you're like i'm gonna start this new corn chips business and the corn crops fail because of (laughs) fucking natural disaster global warming whatever you want to say and like you know you you might have an amazing business plan but like it might not be particularly relevant to what is actually happening in the world that's a very very bad example but it makes sense that it's like you know the changes that we make have to be something that sorry the changes that the changes that we make have to be deeply reflective of you know where we are growing where we're developing and they have to be like collectively focused like That's, I think, the most important thing is like, you know, your vision of abundance is actually based upon, are you able to be present for what abundance actually represents, not only for your life, but like in contribution to something much larger and more pressing that is like, you know, the way in which the earth is asking for your support and consent to be participating in ways that actually feel generative and not Mm -hmm. reckless extractive yeah inconsiderate you know? literally and i'm glad you said this because like if you look at you know every energy is positive and negative there's always two sides to one coin coin um and so when you look at the eight and you look at this overall energy 
eight can, like I said, eight can be very abundant. It can be very, you know, like it's, it is about your manifestation. So like what you truly are manifesting, whether it is positive or negative, you know, that is what some, that's going to be a key component here this year. But, you know, there's a level of, um, like I, I, I look at the eight energy, like even a life path eight, like me, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so like even with a life path eight, there's a strong lesson here behind um feeling very uh because eight energy is very loving, it is very um giving to other people, but eights can really retract and become very stubborn um if they feel that they're giving too much or being taken advantage of. And so there is this level and I say that because there's this level of like feeling of um consistency and feeling of uh, energetic balance that's why I say like money is energy it's an energy exchange you know um when we have this exchange with people when we have this energy with people these conversations with people this ex uh <laughs> overall energetic field that we're sharing with people you know you can look at that energy and it can, it can go in two directions. You can become very stubborn and very like power hungry. Uh, <laughs> you can become very much like not willing to budge on some of the things that are issues right now. And then it can become a whole different thing where the manifestation comes in, like the abundance comes in, you're willing to make shifts and changes. And so we have to look at the fact that there are dynamics of like power here that are going to be coming to the forefront, you know? Um, and if we don't pay attention to that, well, actually it's not even a matter if we don't pay attention to it because it's going to be in our face either way. Like, <laughs> or it's going to be in our face either way. And it's a matter of how we operate <laughs> in those circumstances. So power dynamics, career shifts, like our whole ideolo uh, ideolo ideology <laughs> of, um, of our our power and how much we have and what we don't have like all of these things are going to come to the forefront it's just i think we need to look at both sides of the same coin so that there are indicators when we know like energetically we are falling on one side you get what i'm saying or falling on the other side um mm. and like how to balance it there's like this whole thing of just like being able to balance it because if you have that have like these key points, these indicators, whether it's the relationships or if it's the power dynamics or if it's the the karma that's coming up or, you know, the, the relationship to self, you know, your self-identity, all of these like key components here, you know, for a lot of people, they may wonder, how do you know if it's, if you're falling on the, the, the balanced and positive side or the balanced, unbalanced and negative side, I guess. So like, what would you say in that sense? <laughs> That is really, I mean, the way that you're describing this is like, I don't know, it, it feels really like a little bit level two. It feels really deep. You right. And so, I, no, but not in a way, not in a way where it's like, people won't understand, but it's like, this is important as something to really sit with is like, because when you say balance, checks and balance, it does remind me of karma because like the the, the nature of the universe is is really just like what goes around comes around, right? It's it's like polarity is like night and day or, you know, up and down. Like there's just the, that's that's the, the nature of universal law, I think. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of living in a world that is like extremely imbalanced, which is why it's not just an eight year for us as humans, but like it's an eight year for the earth. Ooh. And that's why we have to be the balancing act. Like we're the stewards of the earth. And like, it's, it's actually just like so much more of a responsibility for us to be in this relationship with, we have to survive in capitalism. Like that's our, that's our ability to stay alive is like, you got to make money, but it's like the virtues around how we're organizing ourselves around that. It's like, those are set to change this year, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of what it brings up for me is like, we're having to balance not based on what is being taught to us through like a media lens, but like an actual balance internally. And I guess I will say for myself, 
You know, it's like, I just finished my personal eight year, you know, 2023 has been my personal eight year. And I started off the year feeling really excited about like making money and like success and all this stuff. And it was actually the wrong way of approaching because all I wanted was like a, a, a boost to my income. And I think that that's an energy that people are going to be having is like this desire to like, you know, have a really active year. I think this year, 2024 is way more busy and active and there's so much change that's going to happen more than all the past previous four years, I think. And let me, you're, you're nodding. So I guess that kind of feels genuine for you as well. So there's something about this year, this upcoming year that is like active and exciting. And that's true. So I'm saying for myself, having my personal eight year, meaning that eight was the energy that was influence, influencing my year. When I fast forward and think about how I actually relate to it is that I was empowered. I saw my potential and I saw my power, which then allowed me to create more wealth for myself, to create better avenues to receive money that was in alignment. It wasn't about just opening my pockets and being like, y'all need to book readings and buy classes and, you know, like pay for my services and like, you know, pay my bills. Like it was actually about aligning with the vibration of money mm -hmm. and aligning with the vibration of money is deeply creative. And it's something where you tap into the abundance within yourself, meaning your skill set and the mastery that you have within yourself and, and being able to articulate that in a way where you become aligned with the frequency of manifestation. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess on this level that we're all going to be experiencing this universal eight year, it's like all of us need to learn about the frequency of manifestation for us. And a lot of us attract the shit that we don't want because of our karma, because of our trauma, because of the way in which we are taught immoral ways of relating to life through the media, through lack of education with with our you know school systems just like all of these things that are disempowering actually and so there is this like really weird energy i'm just like tapping into it now the channel's flowing <laughs> um i'm just tapping into it now that it's like yeah that jupiter uranus conjunction in april and may is really this paradigm shift of being able to have a new revelation about what it means to exist what it means to manifest what it means to be abundant and it, it's it's not given to us it is something where we have to recognize the places where we're disempowered and also lean in really hard to the places where we have actual power yes Ooh. and oof, oof. i feel this i feel this so hard oof. yeah yeah, this is this is really important. Oh my gosh, I was I was getting like hella channelings when you were saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you getting? So <laughs> the dynamic around like our power and to piggyback mm -hmm. off of what you're saying, I I think it's really important to state that we have to be mindful of the things that we were manifesting during this year. Or trying Ooh. to. So, That's so true. That's so true. Yeah. I was about that. Yeah. So like I was talking about this on my live uh on TikTok with a few people. And I was just talking about like, because they brought it to my attention again. And they're like, you have to pay attention to what you were manifesting during this time. Because what's gonna happen is that we literally manifest regardless of whatever frequency we're on, whether it's high or low, we're manifesting. So that manifestation, which we were moving into the eight year, which is about manifestation, you manifest exactly what you wanted to at that low frequency, if you were at a lower frequency. So you may have started here and then moved your way up, like your frequency has moved up, but then by the time you're here, the manifestation you had when you were at the lower frequency is still coming. So it doesn't align to the new person that you've become because your frequency Same. is higher, you know? So we have to be mindful of that as well too. So when we move into this space of the eight, know that we want to be able to operate out of our highest self. Like, at, like in that, and that's, 
sometimes difficult for a lot of people, you know, to operate out, out of your higher self because for a lot of us are in survival mode and we're going to start seeing a lot of that happening. But when those manifestations do come, because they will come, we have to know that, <laughs> that although we may not be aligned, you wanted that job. You know, you wanted this whole freaking job at this frequency and you moved up however many frequencies like up in the higher different dimension and that same job that's coming it don't align with you now you know so like you have to look at how do I operate and, and manifest from a higher place and a higher self so that when I am at that at that frequency the manifestation aligns to what I wanted you know what I knew I was going to want at that higher level of self you know so that that manifestation system, <laughs> you know, we're going to start seeing a lot of that. And, and again, when you talked about, and I, you said it perfectly of like how to operate in the eight, when you're like, I was coming in thinking I'm about to be getting money, buy me, buy my classes, get my readings, the whole nine. And the thing is like me as an eight, I'm still like, yeah, like big money, this, big money. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But uh, <laughs> and the thing is, we have to pay attention to how the universal energy affects our personal lives. Like the collective energy affects our personal lives. We were in a universal seven years. So, of course, it was going to affect us differently than what Yo, this you know? fucking this fucking universal seven year 2023. That bitch was slow. Slow. Like, it was like, like trying to swim through molasses for real. You can't even swim. Like, uh, You're drowning. Like that's what <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. It's just, you know, so we it's it's important to know the impact, you know. So things are gonna start being they're they're gonna start moving. Uh mm -hmm. next year, so 2024, 2025, and 2026 are gonna be very, very, very important, high energy, high impactful years. Yo. So, um, so the slowness that we felt in 2023, we will not be feeling that Yep. in the next yep. few years. Yo, so. I feel like just those manifestations are going to come quick. Oh, yeah. So it's like, if I was going to give just a little bit of advice about just like the way that, you know, my personal, and this is like why I'm like so connected to the numerology is because I have my personal year and then it's always the same universal number after me for the year so like you know my last year was my universal but the last year was my personal seven and this year is a universal seven so i always experience it early and twice <laughs> yep. so like this is coming from personal experience having my personal eight year be uh 2023 for all y'all it's like you really do get what you put out Mm -hmm. I was being a little bit lazy in the beginning of the year. And even though it's like I was working hard, I wasn't working smart. And then halfway through the year, I just got the memo that like, I really need to refine and, and think about things in a much more um, clever and like savvy way. And I really worked super hard. And there was a lot of tears actually, like to be honest, because all of the structures that I had been creating for these past eight years of literally having my astrology business, it just, something was off and, and I'm seeing the result of what it's like to put in better infrastructure, but I had to really tap in deep, like into my heart to, <clears throat> to really figure out like what it means for me to be running this business and find the inspiration again and find the excitement and figure out how it can be renewed. Yeah. And this is really good advice because I can feel how this is like also a part of the energy is like, there's a renewal happening in 2024. It's, it's a collective renewal and it'll be renewal through also rage. It'll be renewal through being fucking pissed as well. But it's kind of like time where these things are starting to, to form into action. And we'll see that even more in, 2020 um five hundred thousand percent oh yeah that's Woo! there like hundred thousand like... percent so but i mean like <laughs> you know we had a slow year it's been like you know our spirits are a little you know tired we're sad girls feeling like the need to, to rise up a little and 
that's happening in 2024 <laughs> much faster. Oh, but yeah. I really, I really see it as like we should really be learning more deeply about the energetics of manifestation. And that's some, I think that that's some genuine advice. You mentioned it already, but I'm just like, I'm adding on to it. I'm like saying, no, this is some real shit for sure. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing. That's the thing. Like manifestation, our relationship to abundance, our definition of abundance. Like all of that stuff is going to play a big role this this year. Um, I'm actually really excited. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like we did talk about some stuff, you know, but like I'm like really excited because I know for me, like the seven universal seven energy of 2023 was really difficult, you know, and so super hard, like super hard. Not to say eight is easy. You let's just be real, y'all. Like. It's not not to say eight is easy. It's different. It's, just, it's different. <laughs> yeah, it's different. <laughs> and so and 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 movement happens. And so um everybody relates to the numbers differently and everybody has their own personal energies that are affecting them on a day-to-day basis. So it's always good to know that, like, you know what the universal energy is, but then to know what your personal energy is can give you a lot more insight to Solid. how to navigate it. Like you got to know how to maneuver and navigate the energies. Super solid. Woo, man! I will, I will definitely just. I'm gonna plug you immediately and say that you know I, I know how to read my astrology. Easy It's like it's a part of my practice. It's part of my life. But when I started working with Tira and like just getting the understanding of like my personal month, my personal year, and like really understanding it though, not just like on a basic level, but like understanding the frequency and vibration it has actually been the most impactful in terms of like the types of readings that i get and the the practices that i really integrate into how i forecast for myself yo i feel like numerology is really solid for tuning into like launches abundance in general and like it's just a really great tool and it's just I, you know, numerology is not as popular as astrology right now, but I really think that time needs to change. <laughs> well, things are changing. And like, first of all, thank Yo. you. Because mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. am so, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are, are aware of it, aware of numerology, but there are so many people who are not. And so, you know, for those mm-hmm. who are super, like, just excited and want to know more about it um definitely you can contact me but overall let me tell y'all something i pretty much did the work for you so if you oh, really want to get the the energy of 2024 and like how to redefine you know your 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 relationship to abundance and the essence of abundance um mm-hmm. you can go ahead and look in this is on my link in my bio or like you can provide a link or whatever the case may be but mm-hmm. i have my essence of abundance calendar Yo! 24 this and you can see one in the back so this is the 11 by um or 8.5 and then the one back here is the uh 14 by 11.5 and mm-hmm. this is the essence of abundance calendar pretty much is your numerology guide to success and I did all the work for you. So while we were talking about what April was and how May is going to be this and December is going to be that, like, I literally did it for you. So you can have the energy of what the month is, the universal month. And then I'm giving you tools um, to guide you for that month on how to attract more abundance and how, like, what to work on and what to focus on and what energy it is that's going to be calling for you during this month so Yo. every month here is your regular wall calendar this is the map version and we talk about a lot of different things and it's such a such a beautiful such a beautiful calendar i'm so happy Yo, i'm it so is excited so beautiful so beautiful so excited. Thank you. Like, this is what we talked about with march you know so or april mm-hmm. sorry april but it's giving you the energy and the the overall guidance that you need to attract abundance. So if you're interested in getting one, you should, you should be interested in getting one, uh, go mm-hmm. ahead 
and go to queenswithlitdreams.com. You can follow me on social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Queens Will It Dreams, and you can get your calendar right then and there. It's on TikTok shop. It's on my own shop. Um, but this is literally done for you. So instead of going at, going at it by yourself and trying to figure it out, you know, what is the energy? You can just get you a calendar and it tells you every month. Or you can get a reading with me, which that's always very helpful too. <laughs> highly recommend, highly recommend. Basically, you know, the ways that you've helped me, not only in just like helping to understand like universal number plus my own personal numbers like for the month or for the year and like how those blend you know those have been just so lit you've also helped me with like organizing prices uh when i was gonna you know change a phone number or like when i'm gonna move into an apartment like helping me with the numerology because all of those things can either attract abundance or it can deflect mm -hmm. you can choose a price that might not be a very uh desirable effect you know and so like you really supported me with all that and I really just want people to know about your work I'm really you know one of your biggest fans <laughs> for sure and also just genuinely like you're so talented and you know I love our ways that we work and like I'm, I'm glad that you know people listening get to experience just like this is a pretty regular type of conversation that me and Tara would have you know we we are just nerds and we are always trying to like up level and develop our skills and our site and um you know just sharing this with all of you is like a big part of what has helped me grow actually as a reader so love that this gets to be you know a gift and an offering to other people and so you know always super grateful for you tara um are there any other offerings that you have that you're kind of working on right now Yes. So um, aside from my uh, calendar, uh, you can find my uh, my essence, well, my essence of abundance calendar. And then you can also find my socks that I design as well, too. A lot of people do not realize how impactful your socks are when it comes to your healing, when it comes to your sleeping and when it comes to your overall energy flow. Um, and so the socks that, yeah, I tell my clients this all the time, like you feel very black right now. You're probably wearing black socks all the time, you know? And if you aren't wearing black socks or you're not wearing socks at all, you need something that's going to allow things to flow, like the energy to flow in and out of your feet. And so the design socks that I have help with being more intentional about what you're trying to um, do with your healing. If you're trying to allow uh, flow or if you're trying to block or if you're trying to, you know, be open. And if you're trying to work on certain chakras, those are the socks that I actually work on. Um, and so they're called in soul socks, <laughs> like in your soul. <laughs> and Aww, <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> Yeah. And so I also offer my um, my spiritual services. So I do my psychic mediumship readings. I do my spiritual intuitive readings. I recently just had a few readings that I was just like, real, like it just it sparks it sparks flames. I'm telling you. <laughs> so people who want to connect, if you want to connect with the loved one, um, you can get the mediumship reading. If you're trying to get more spiritual insight, you can get a spiritual intuitive reading. And then I also have my dream interpretive. Um, services so i interpret your dreams your sweet dreams uh and so i'll be really getting people with the dreams um and not <laughs> so yeah i do the dream interpretations um i also do dream warrior coaching so if you are interested in learning how to become the dream warrior that you already are um, and just learn how to interpret your own dreams, learn how what tactics to use to help you support yourself in your dreams, protect your dreams, protect yourself in your dreams. And the whole nine, I coach people on that specifically. As you as you heard in the beginning, it's 20 plus years of dream interpretation that I've been doing. So uh, whether you want to know just what a simple dream is and what it means or whatever the case may be, or if you really want to undergo that a journey of becoming a dream warrior uh either way i have those offers for you know for you and of course my numerology services <laughs> <laughs> all right boo well shit i mean you have a lot of things going on <laughs> i know that's a lot dreams spiritual readings and numerology those are the main three so <laughs> the yo 
I mean, that's yeah. You're just we're just creative babes. We are. That's how it be. Yeah. I mean, I can't help it. Like, I mean, I can't help that I'm not like you know. I'm not just in one narrow straight way. They all no, connect. no, no. So it's like, I, I think when we're working with spirit, it teaches you to just be like really, really flexible and like really creative. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's not like I'm making fun of you with like having all these things. It's like, no, you're just tapped in and you could just like, you can show up to like anything and be able to read anything. And I think like, you know, I'm moving in that direction too. Yeah. For yeah. Sure, for you sure. You definitely are. Um, <laughs> definitely yeah. are. I've, I, I've seen that growth for sure. You know, and I think the biggest thing is like, Although like we may be very versatile in our in our modalities, um, the biggest thing is like when we work with clients, we're able to pinpoint exactly what the client needs. So, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. like it's not like whether you're working in herbalism or you're working in cooking or in astrology or you know, like you literally do so much as well too. And the thing is like <laughs> Whether I'm working in the dreams or the, like a lot of times people come to me and they're like, hey, I want to know about this dream. But then it's like, oh, you're getting hella numbers in your dreams. Are you even aware of numerology at all? You know, like, uh-huh. <laughs> and so it, it, it depends on what the client needs or what the person actually needs. And we're able to pinpoint that. That's what makes the the, the gift of being, you know, great in so many different modalities helpful for other people so mm-hmm. yeah. absolutely the flex <laughs> yeah 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 shit is cute it's cute <laughs> all right well um i'll just share that i am you know as we're closing out 2023 it's like what december 16 2023 as we're recording this i have a uh one year natal mentorship that's uh filling up slowly there's four spots left that starts on january 18 2023 and then um the following weekend i have a uh my first live retreat with my very good super talented friend yael it's going to be in the bay area and it's going to be from january 19 through the 21st it's a retreat that is focused on ancestral healing and anchoring dreams like this is going to be really powerful and i work a lot with ancestral healing and i'm super excited to have chosen and actually yael chose this date but when i looked at the astrology i was like this is one of the most powerful dates in the beginning of the year and the whole energy is really about this super deep healing process so like we're going to be doing a lot of kriya kundalini practice i'll be cooking um, and making food that is designed for the process of healing i'll be creating an altar we'll be doing a lot of prayer it's going to be very powerful, yo. So if you're really wanting a major shift and you're ready for that, then that event is going to be an entire, I mean, my first retreat and I've been wanting to do retreats for years. And so I'm genuinely feeling that I know this is going to be really powerful. And like, I just, I just know this is going to be a whole thing. And um, yeah, super excited for that. Um other things that are going on, um, my full natal astrology course is still on sale. Um, if you don't have the capacity to, to study with me uh, in a mentorship program, which is like super intimate, then there's self-study courses. And also like I am doing readings as well. So between my consulting page, oakastrology.com and my school website, oakastrologyschool.com, you can totally check out those offerings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. much. Um, Tiara, I think that you must come back on soon and we probably should have some more conversations about numerology, astrology, and it was really amazing to have you. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for everything and thank you so much for having me. I hope everybody enjoyed. Yay!